He's gonna pick it up with that big ass thing. Yeah, I'd love to drive one of those things around. Yeah. So much fun, dude. Good. All right, so we did it. We cut down our Ford 88 to fit the Z. Um, kind of went through a little trial and tribulation here. So we had originally bought this actual housing that you see that we cut and welded. Uh, under the assumption that it was a limited slip, which is what we've been looking for, obviously. Uh, cracked the case open, what, two weeks ago, found out it was not a limited slip. Um, so we went garage, or, uh, 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 junkyard. junkyard hunting, and we pulled out that guy in the back of the truck, which has the carrier and everything that we need inside of it. And we got a bonus, it came with all the backing plates and brake stuff that we need too. Um, so we ended up just kind of Frankensteining the two together. Um, the nice thing about this one that we ended up welding was it already had the brackets and everything stripped off of it. So it made, uh, you know, our goal a lot easier. Um, but between the two, I think we have all the pieces that we need to finally get this bad boy ready to put in the Datsun. So the way that we realized this was not a limited slip was actually opening it up and, and looking at the internals. Um, but after doing a little bit more research, which I should have done before we picked this thing up, we actually got the shaved one from a friend. So we kind of took his word for it. Turns out he didn't know either. Um, but on the Ford 88s, which are super, super common. When you go to the junkyard, you see these things everywhere. But you can see on the tag here, uh, there's a whole bunch of numbers. The, of course, there's the 88 right, right there for 8.8. .8. But this is really what you want to look at here. The 373 indicates that it is a 373 gear ratio. If it is a limited slip differential, there will be right an, in that space. Yeah. There will be an L between the three and the seventy-three. You'll see an L, and I'll show you on our other axle. This one uh, came from the junkyard. We spent one hundred and fifty bucks, and this is a thing of beauty because we don't have any brake parts. We were thinking we were going to have to buy like a universal brake kit, which was several hundred dollars, um, and it really is just more than we need. But uh, this one has brakes on it, even drilled rotors, which is it's a pretty sweet upgrade. Uh, but on the tag, you will see. They got three, the letter L, 73. And then of course, 8.8 .8 right there. So um, this one does have the limited slip. So we we're, went ahead and jigged up our bandsaw over here, cut the axle. What do we have to cut off of it? Like two and 15, uh, Let me check my notes. <laughs> yeah, we took some measurements to, to match the side. Now, as many of you may know when you do the 8.8 you end up evening this, the axles out because the 8.8 has one long side and one short side so we did have to chop a little bit of length out of one of the tubes so we ended up cutting off a total from a long side of two and seven eighths inches and that makes it match up to the 17 and 1 16 inches of the already short side of the axle housing so using the bandsaw was a treat because because we don't have the alignment tool there actually is a, a long rod that is meant to go in the axle it it centers up in the um, under the caps for the differential carrier and then all the way out to the outside of the axles and just keeps everything in line and we don't have that so making a close to perfectly perpendicular cut was key to, to having a straight axle so we ran through the bandsaw we didn't really like the cut we ran it again and got a much better cut just setting the machine up a little bit different and then uh, when we were done and i kind of skipped over all, a lot of this because we were just working away but um when we were done we were able to just butt the two ends of pipe of this tube up and then use a straight edge to confirm that everything was true and everything was nice. And honestly, it's within a very tight margin. Everything is really good. And then once we got it tacked up and in place, took measurements of how we did on our measure on our, our how much we cut off. And it was perfectly even both sides. We already had a shorty axle that we got from the junkyard a while back yep. before we knew that this was not a limited slip. So we got some leftover parts for sure. We spent a little more than we needed to. But I think it's worth it to have this thing already shaved. Yeah, and honestly, in the long run, I mean, for what we got for the actual limited slip axle that we ended up getting from the junkyard, came with so many extra parts that we would have spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on to make this work. So Definitely. Even though we had to buy two axles, I think we still came out on top. For sure, for sure. And like to get like a limited slip, like a Ford Racing limited slip to, that drops into this is a few hundred bucks, you know. So we ended up spending, we're about 300 in it. To, well, 300 plus what we spent on that 
that spare shorty that we didn't really need right. to get. So we're probably like 350, 360 into it or something like that. But it's shortened up, it's measured to spec, we have brakes, we got limited slip, we have a clear slate that we can weld all the brackets to that we need to. So next on the list, we're going to need to pull all the crap we want off of that one. And then uh, we start planning on putting this stuff in the Z. I know we haven't had much content coming lately. I've been kind of just collecting the videos here and there. Me and Matt really haven't been getting after it very much. Um, but hopefully we're gonna have a good productive off season, a good winter, yeah. and come in the spring and have the Z ready, ready to, yeah. to enter some some serious class, some like force induction sport yeah. or force induction pro classes or, or whatever we're applicable for. Yeah. And get out of that 11.5 rut that we've been in yeah, for, for sure. so long. For years. <laughs> Greetings folks, Steve here. And at the house, we got old Goldie here. Now, I know you guys haven't seen Goldie in a long, long time. Here's a quick recap of what's going on with Goldie and why we have not seen her breaking any hearts at the track in a while. Uh, last time we went to the track, total failure, broke on the line, hard, car wouldn't move. This thing has a welded differential and when it doesn't move, that means one of two things. Either you broke both axles or broke something on the, in the drive and the, uh, the differential. Um, when I put it in gear, drive shaft turns, car doesn't move. I think it probably sheared the pinion shaft, but I can't be sure. Either way, I'm not about to hunt down another R200 for this thing. This thing is an axle crusher. This has broken every axle we've put in. It has broken hubs, and now it has broken the diff, and we're done with that. So we're about to embark on a big project, swapping in a solid Ford 8.8 .8 limited slip 373 in the back of this thing. That's right, we are going to a live axle from the just awful uh, independent rear suspension these things had. It was really more of like a, almost a swing arm. It's just not good. It's, it's set up so that when the vehicle squats, camber changes substantially. That's why you may have noticed in some other videos, we really have the thing cambered kind of positive. So the squat kind of levels out. Anyway, we're getting rid of all that nonsense. No whip more welded diff. We're gonna put some real wheels on the back and definitely gonna be some chopping going on in the chassis. But without further ado, I'm about to just start tearing this thing apart. We're gonna pull the whole rear cradle, differential, axles, everything's coming out of it. I'm hoping to get a lot done this weekend, but uh, let's get right to it. Yo, that was actually real freaking easy to get this whole subframe out of there. All in one piece. You don't gotta mess with the sway bar. You don't gotta mess with the brakes, really. All I did was just snip the brake lines where they attach to the car. And uh, you got your insulator bolt back here. Subframe bolt, subframe bolt. It's like a little bracket that has a couple 14s that you pull off. And then just pop the shocks off of the knuckle. And man, that was for sure the easiest cradle I've ever removed from a car. And I've done some cradle removing in my day. But that's a huge step in the right direction. I'm gonna need some manpower to help me throw this thing in the back of the truck. So this big boy needs to go in that place where that one once was. And so uh, I just need to kind of swap them out, get the one out of the bed, put this one in the bed. I really want to look into what went wrong with the diff, but I just don't know if I feel like making that mess, you know, taking all that apart. Well, here is the space that we're working with here. So, uh, not really sure what I envisioned, but Axel is gonna live right here. And uh, I'm gonna try like hell to use these same coilovers. I'm not sure how much longer I can make them, but uh, we'll work on figuring that out. And then we need to find somewhere to mount our ladder, our ladder bar brackets up here in the front. I think this little rail that rides along here is probably gonna be our most structurally sound component to link to. And honestly, it looks pretty perfect. Like right up here, where this where the turn down is, I could just reinforce that with some steel plates, weld it all the way around the edges, and then weld our bracket to that. And then honestly, I've been wanting to use some of my extra chromoly I got laying around to do like some subframe connectors up towards the front, just to try to create a little bit more stiffness in this that chassis area. Because honestly, this car's a potato chip. I mean, it's just, everything's super thin. So we gotta make sure everything that we weld to for our bracketing and stuff goes to the strong components like this beam, the upper coil support. I'm sure hoping to continue to use that. 
I'm not sure how a bigger tire is gonna fit in here. If I need to, we'll cut this whole tub out. Uh, I've never done anything like that in my life, but you know, this is the car to, to learn on for sure. I mean, it's real simple. It's already gutted completely on the inside and I don't think anything in this fender well is particularly structural. Although I still need to make, I need to make, well, I could cut up here. I don't think I could, I mean, I, without moving the, the coil over, I really couldn't do much else. So we'll kind of see, I, I envision a possibility that I don't have to cut the whole floor out back here, but you know, we'll see, it is what it is. My roll bar does tie into the upper strut towers on the inside. So it'd be real annoying to have to cut that out and relocate the shocks. I'm gonna try to make these shocks work. And, uh, now we get to start really envisioning how this is all gonna come together. All right, so I got some pieces to the puzzle here. So we got our ladder bars here. And I uh, kinda wanted to tell you guys my plan. So it's just like a universal 33 inch ladder bar. And I installed this plate here. I think I have the axle on the right part here. I wanted to drop this in the video, um, just in case anyone has any information that could kind of assist me here before I go and install the stuff in totally the wrong manner. Now I understand the I understand the basic principles of the push point and um, the anti squat line and kind of how I'm going to set all that up. So I'm not sure I really need a whole lot of guidance there, but certainly that's welcome info too. But let me just show you all my plan. So right now the axle is in position, approximately at the distance from the body that it will be at ride height when it's on the ground. So my thoughts are, axle goes on the top part here. I could easily flip these and have it down here, but I don't think that makes sense. Um, this part goes on top, this part goes on bottom. And what I'm planning is going to be to essentially put this guy on there. And up here in the front, I'm going to chop away the floor to make room for this and it will go up into the body because obviously at that angle there, that's gonna put our anti-squat line way too low. So I need, I need my push point, that end mounting point to be up through the floor. So I'm working on that right now. Um, that's my plan. So someone tell me if the orientation of this bars is totally whack, but I think I got a pretty good plan. And uh, I think the, when the bar's installed and everything's at ride height, the pinch point's probably gonna be, or I'm sorry, the push point is probably gonna be around here. And so I'm gonna kind of map out the approximate you know, center of gravity of the car and then get a, um, a neutral line. There's like a imaginary like neutral line. And uh, I, what you want is for the push point to be somewhere along that neutral line. It typically kind of just chops like this whoosh, through the car. So I think we're gonna be pretty good having the push point about here, um, but we'll see. And I, I don't know if anyone's done, someone's done this before, uh, but they didn't share a whole lot of info on how they did it. I just kind of saw them in the Z forums. But anyway, that's my plan. Uh, I'll have to get rid of all the sound deadening in here. And I got this, this bracket is what my passenger seats mounted up to. Um, the seat tracks were gone long ago and it's the same way on the other side too. Um, I don't remember why we chose to do it that way, but we did. I don't think that's going to interfere with anything, though. I'm going to cut out just a long cylinder or a portion of the floor, like right about here, and uh, kind of go from there. I think what I'll probably end up doing is welding a steel plate, an eighth-inch steel plate on the tunnel here, welding an eighth-inch steel plate on the side here, like up against right here, and then I have some um, chromoly tubing that I can weld across from there to there. And then on that tubing is where I will uh, put my uh, little clevis for the front of my ladder bar. So that's my plan right now. That's all I'm gonna be sharing on this episode. I gotta find somewhere to get dry ice. My local Kroger doesn't sell it anymore. My local Tom Thumb doesn't sell dry ice. So if anyone knows where I can get some dry ice in North Texas, that's somewhere near McKinney, that'd be great to know also. But I'll call around and see if I can figure that out for myself. Anyway, that's all for tonight. Stay tuned and we will see you on the next portion of this uh, ladder bar installation.